Okay, so uh, this is a bit of a different video. Uh, I asked on Twitter uh, if anyone had any UX flows in the app they're working on uh, that they were struggling with, wanted to improve. And I got this question from Ryan um, who said, I made a directory app. I'm not happy with the hard part has been the household details view, which is a slide over and making sure it opens closes on forward back navigation is a real pain in the a it is designed as offline first so data comes from local storage and then he shared um this code sandbox with me and it's he said the big quirk is that he cannot uh figure out how to show hide a slide over that can be open closed with forward back browser navigation and properly animate it so uh we thought it'd be fun to just do a live recording i spent like five or six minutes with this and saw some things that um, I would change and stopped right there and figured we should record it. And so I'm basically coming into this blind. We both are, and we figured it'd be fun to, yeah, just kind of expose some of our thought process when it comes to refactoring apps like this and um, see how it goes, looking at a code base where neither of us are familiar with and, and how we would pair on it. So uh, does that sound good, Ryan? Sounds great. Awesome. Looking at a code base you're not familiar with is like uh, me every day, you know? Yeah. <laughs> the code I wrote yesterday. <laughs> there you go. So um, let's go ahead and hide the video. And here is the app. It's a Next.js app, and I have it running locally here. And it's really this simple um, directory listing of people with some cool sticky headers here. And when you click on a person, we see that there's a slide over that comes out that shows their details. And you can see the URL changes, which is uh, what Ryan was referring to here. And then you can click close to, to kind of dismiss it. And so he was asking about hitting the back button and letting this slide closed and also um, getting that animation to work basically in both of those cases. So uh, let me make sure I'm on actually the correct version here. I'm going to go back to npm install and then start this over because I thought the animation wasn't working at all when I first looked at this. But it looks like the, the unmount animation does work if we click close. Okay, so it does work if we click close. But if we hit back, we see this, the panel just disappear. So that's kind of what we're going to focus on. And if we click here, information for Sam, this is like a stripped down version of the app that he wrote um, so he could share it with me. It's a directory app I built for church, data source from a Google Sheet, app itself can be installed as a PWA, has auth, which I removed, loads the directory data, index DB upon successful login, allowing the user to run completely offline in perpetuity. Stripped a bit of functionality out of the demo, but the main digital directory view is pretty much untouched. Basically on desktop, the goal is to have proper sidebar slide out to show a detailed view of the household, and on mobile, it would just look like a new screen. The biggest complication came from wanting to show or hide that detail view on forward back navigation. So there's already quite a bit here. Um, you know, this reminded me of um, the React router docs when Ryan first shipped, Ryan Florence first shipped v4, v5. He had a demo where there would be a new route that on desktop showed a slide over. But if you ever went to mobile, it was an entirely new screen. And uh, that was pretty cool. But pretty complicated piece of functionality. So we'll probably won't tackle that in this um, video and we'll just focus on the navigation. Um, the two clunky US, UX bits are how to present the household's details given that there are some households with only one person and some households with multiple people plus there's considerably more information about households, some households than others. And two, ensuring the slide out would show hide with animations as expected when navigating forward and back. This is mostly functional today. You can see the logic and digital directory component where I'm using use router and use search params and a link to set the query string in the household listing component. So far, I've not come up with a solution for ensuring the close animation is triggered when using the back button though, but the open animation works just fine when navigating forward. So um, yeah, that's about where we're at. And uh, again, if we look here, we can kind of see what he's talking about. So, um, any questions yet, or should we uh, just dive into the code? Let's dive into the code. Cool. So we're on the index page, but he said the um, this is kind of what we're looking at, digital directory. So let's go ahead and open this. 
And uh, let's just take a look here. I'm going to move this over here just so we have some more room in the code. Um, here we see the return JSX. We see the filter panel set search. So that looks like it's going to be this part right here, which it is. And um, then we have a loading indicator, which I'm guessing we would see when we refresh, which we do. And then uh, we have this filterable households list. And then here, if we have a household here, we render a slide over with the details. So that looks like uh, once we select it, that's what all of this is. So um, we have the URL identifying the household. And then when I click back, the slide over disappears instead of un unanimating. So right away, I'm seeing slide over on exit complete. And uh, that is calling router.back. So presumably, when I click this, within the slide over, it animates closed. And then on exit complete is firing after the animation finishes and calling router back. And you can see that that's exactly what happens here where the URL bar changes um, as soon as the animation finishes. So that's how he, that's his strategy for making it so that you have time to wait for the animation to finish before updating the router. So the reason that clicking back doesn't work for the animation is because as soon as we click back, this household, which I'm guessing comes from the search params, it looks like it's a piece of React state and it looks like it gets set inside of an effect uh, if there are search params right here. So as soon as you hit back, household's gonna be set back to undefined because of this effect. And that doesn't give React time to animate this at all. And so that's basically the, the heart of his question here. So I think that's what's going on. And um, I think what we need to do here is do unmount animations the way you and I do them, which is in a way that works with um, JSX and variables being unset. So instead of having two different code paths from closing the modal versus hitting the back button, those should be updating the same piece of state. And then that new render should handle unmount animations. Now we usually use frame of motion for this kind of thing um, because it works with that. If we look in slide over, he's using transition root um, from headless UI. And for this to have an unmount animation, it needs to always be rendered and show needs to go from true to false. So we're going to have to rework this a little bit so that slide over is always rendered. Ah, gotcha. So this household that we're using uh, to control on line eight, it sounds like you're going to move that into the slide over component. Exactly. And let me just ch change my um, line numbers here back to absolute so that we can um, have that. Uh, so yes, here on 60, um, we want this to be, this needs to always be rendered. That's kind of the first main thing here. This, this needs to always be rendered for it to unmount because currently React has no way of deferring uh, unmount while a transition is happening or an animation. They've talked about this a lot, but this is where like frame motion is really good. And we usually like that because it would let you write code like this, which, you know, is more idiomatic React. And then the animations you can layer on top without changing its logic. But because we're using a uh, transition from headless UI, this is going to need to always be rendered. And then um, we can conditionally um, render the content. Well, it, it will actually do that just when this goes from true to false. So cool. um, that's like the first thing. And the second thing is this on exit complete if I was like reviewing this with somebody, this is kind of how I would explain it on exit complete is kind of like an imperative on exit complete and then router back. That's impair. That's more imperative code. You're saying when the animation finishes, click the back button basically, but as much as possible in react, we should strive for a more declarative and staying with the UI as a function of state. So the way I would think about this UI is, when you click on it and you set the link, household is selected is true. And now what do we render? And then when I either click close or the back button, you set household to false, 
and then is what is rendered and then again ui as a function of state so on exit complete is the kind of thing that you should only reach for um in very rare situations and instead what we want is for both code paths whether you're clicking close or back think about the piece of state that those should affect update that state and then re-render the app so we want both of these code paths to be the same thing and we want a single source of truth for any piece of state in the app including this household um, param here so um, let's start by um, i'm going to go ahead and hide the video I wonder if I can just like move it. I'll just put it down there. Yeah. Um, let's start by looking in here. And instead of on exit complete. I was going to say, I really liked how you started that. You said that slide over needs to always be rendered. And then you're going to use uh, the headless, headless UI transition to control it. Can we, can we do that? Can we just make slide I over? I think so. I think so. So, um, so let's just get rid of this. And um, let's make this work basically the way we would expect. So if we close this and we go back and refresh the home page, we see it's rendered right now. So this is because it's rendered. And so really what we want is to pass in this show prop right here because also this is kind of being controlled in two places this is like another single source of truth we kind of have the outside caller which was controlling it with the conditional household and and but we also have this open and and uh true or false state right here that's controlling it so really we want to hoist that up and pass that in as a prop so let's let's just try some stuff here so let, we're going to expose open it's not going to be state anymore and now we're just going to pass this right here and then this set open we see it's called a few places here uh, let's just also take that in as well it's basically moving this um, up question can mm -hmm. can we look at both the set opens mm -hmm. i think it's on the dialog close which would be triggered if you click escape yep, yep. or click outside um, yep. or the close button right here. So this is going to gotcha. be uh, the back button. Just a little comment. They're not really set opens. It looks like they're more an on close thing. Give, give me control to close this. Right. Let's just, let's start with this and then we'll, we can rename it if sure. it's, um, something like void, right? And takes in a Boolean. Yeah, on close. That's kind of what you're saying. Exactly. Right. So this is going to be. Well, let's let's do let's here. Let me just kind of get into it here. So I'm just going to say like let's set open is like a function for now. It doesn't do anything. Yeah. Actually, we just comment it out for now. Ah, I'll just do this. So it's do a console fine. log. Like you 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 click set open or something. Mm hmm. Okay, so now we're seeing this error. Transition is used, but it's missing show true false prop. So uh, open, open, but we're not passing anything in. And so open is going to be basically if we have a household, right? Because that was what was yeah. controlling it before. And this is a Boolean, so we can make this a Boolean, something like that. And so now we see that when we render the app, we don't see the slide over anymore. So this is kind of like the first thing, right? It's always rendered. And then once it's set, that open comes through. So now when we click close here, let's get this working. Um, Hold on, can I see you click the back button again? Because it, it looked like when we click the back button, we lose the query param. Mm -hmm. ah, but I it's think going that back might to be because page. of the okay. effect. But you can already see I'm clicking the back button and we're getting the unknown cool. animation. So that was the trick with um, that. Let's actually take care of this before we implement this. Let's get it working with just the URL. So I think uh, something else that popped out to me here is this effect. We have this URL param. And if I refresh this, it actually doesn't work. So if we take a look at the code, we see that we get the household name here in the URL. And we also have something that says head Gennaro. So 
it looks like we have two pieces of data in the URL, and I'm not sure if we actually need both of those. Usually you would have an ID for this, each household, something like, you know, household, selected household equals one or two or three, and then that ID could be used to get all the data, but let's just keep this for now. But looking here, we use the search params, we get the household and the head, and then we set the household into React state using this get household function. So let's take a look at this. Comes from use directory. And uh, here's use directory. This is simulating index DB storage. This is a great reproduction, by the way. Um, We have loading, we have some state that has people. So this is simulating something like a data fetch, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we have like a 50 millisecond timeout before we get the people from data. And I'm guessing this is just like a date. Yep, it's a data file. And then this finds um, the, the household from that. So I have a question here. So is, is get household supposed to be the kind of thing that's like this, like synchronous stateless API that can just act on like a set of data, or is it supposed to be more of a, something that's like needs to go to the network, does like a DB lookup, does like, it's more, more equivalent to a fetch. Cause I can see wanting to use the effect if you need to use something closer to a fetch, but if it's something like iterating over a list and just finding an item by name or ID, then I would say like, okay, let's pull out the effect. I believe um, it is more like an asynchronous function and it's in, because it's interacting with index DB. So even though that data is local, I think it's an asynchronous API. Gotcha. So then like, I guess usually like, just sort of how my brain thinks here is like, I, I don't know, I, like going back to like the fetch example, I wouldn't want to write use fetch in an effect. Sorry, right. I wouldn't want to write fetch in an effect. I would want to look for a use fetch library. And if one didn't exist, you, I'd make my own little wrapper. So maybe there's like a use index DB or whatever. Like it kind of sounds like that's what use directory is. Uh, but then there's another hook that's like use um, household and then I can pass like use household. It takes an ID and it can return me a, um, a household. Maybe that's what all this is, is doing. I'm, I'm Kind of just yep. it looks this, like but... it looks like households um it looks like households is so if we were to console.log households and loading and uh i'm going to come over here and just make this like 500 yeah. milliseconds very cool and we take a look at the console here and refresh let's just go back to the home page yeah, we're getting some some stuff there and we refresh then uh yeah so we get loading is true households is zero and then loading is false house gotcha. is 39. so i think this is kind of like yeah like a use fetch simulation and then i think this get household is just a sing a single function that's like a it saves you from having to write you know households.find or something like that um cool very cool. so yes so this being in state, if you think about this, I think I would actually, let's start just to make sure, because I do think this is a good idea, kind of like Ryan was saying, to encapsulate your logic into this hook. Usually if you, an existing data library exists, you would do that, use that instead because they've thought about all sorts of stuff, but this is effectively serving that purpose. But because this is the people here and this is a source of truth. It's the state in the hook that gets set after it, you know, fetches it from, from um, local storage. And then we have this logic right here. I'm actually going to copy this. And if you think about it, once we have the households here, once we get to this state where it's defined, we shouldn't need an effect um, for this. So in general, this is something else that that happens where effects are really should be thought about for dealing with external systems, things like the network or index DB. 
but but they shouldn't be used for things like um, turn deriving one piece of state or data from another piece of React state. Kind of if you're if you're in React world already, then you just want to derive it. So actually, I don't even need to copy that right here. This is a, a synchronous function. It's not async at all. So check this out. Household is a piece of state, but it doesn't have to be. Household name right here starts out as undefined. And if we have these two things from the search params, then household is going to equal this. So you see, let's now console.log. Let's add this down here. And uh, I'll add household right here. And let's just look at the data and what happens. So I'm going to start off on the home page of refresh. Household is undefined. Households are loaded. And then when I click, we have household selected. And we didn't have an extra render and we didn't have to use an effect. And if I hit back, look at that. Household is undefined. So um, this is giving us like consistent render frames where the data all agrees. Whereas doing this in an effect, actually this would kind of be interesting to just see what happens. If we go back to the case where we have a separate piece of state for something that can be just synchronously derived from this piece of state, look at what the behavior is now. Let's go back to the home page and refresh. So we have the same initial thing here, but when I click on one of these, look, we get two renders. We actually have two additional renders undefined and then after the effect runs, we set that new state. And then if I were to go back, we have two more renders as well. So you can imagine this introducing a lot of basically incorrect states where the URL bar shows you that the search params for household is no longer there. There's no search param, but your household state needs another render frame to catch up. And this is the kind of bugs that comes up when you use effects for things that are really just deriving state from another piece of state or basically dealing with things that are already inside React. So let's put this all back and um, we don't need the effect for this and we don't need this piece of state. And I think that back button is happening because of this on exit complete. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now we can get rid of this as well. Whoops. And <clears throat> that just looks like a type error, but let's let's see what the behavior is now. So let's go back to the home, refresh, and click, and then hit back. So check that wow. out. Wow, very, very cool. cool, right? And then if I click this, well, we haven't wired that up yet because we have that setter, but this is, um, and now forward and back works. And we got rid of an effect, which is like my favorite thing to do. <laughs> let's refresh on this and see what happens. Look at that. Very we cool. also fixed the initial render. Um, pretty neat. Let's take care of this uh, this animation on initial render and see if we can. Because ideally, this shouldn't be. Ideally, you would want to load the app and not see it slide in once the yep, data yep. loads. Yeah. Can we fix this type error first? Can we get rid of? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So let's say let's go back to this. Slide over needs on exit complete. We can just make that optional. We're going to get rid of that actually, but for now we can make it optional just to make the point. And uh, types look good over here. And I think up here is actually what's doing this. So I think if we go to headless, U, headless UI.dev, and we find the transition component and we look for up here. Uh, this is going to be transitioning on initial mount. If you want an element to transition the very first time it's rendered, set the appear prop to true. And I, this may be useful if you want on initial load, but we actually don't want that. I'm guessing it was there because 
originally it was, wrapped in it, was, it was wrapped in an if exactly so i think if we just get rid of this and we refresh let's see here transition uh, can we can we go back in to here yeah just make sure okay so we show we're always rendering this. Is there anything that's like conditionally rendering this? No, right? Mm. Just, I just wanted to make sure that we weren't conditionally rendering some. Ah, we're gonna, oh, I, I have an idea. Let's take a look at our data again. Let's take a look at our renders. This is something else I like to do is just, you know, get a sense for each frame of the render and uh, what the data is. So I'm gonna make this big and let's come up here and see what the renders are. So console.log for basically for household. And I think on initial render, we get undefined and we then we get this. So it's already rendered once, that's why it's animating. But I'm pretty sure loading, if we refresh, loading is going to be true and then it's gonna be false. So we actually well, don't wanna hey, render starts, this until loading is done. It starts, it starts off, off false. at false, so we could fix that, but I don't think that will matter. So, um, I have a feeling this loader, yep, this loader that he's doing right here. So let's just refresh really quick and see, we see a loading directory data, right? <laughs> this is doing um, this whole screen thing. But if you look, yeah, let me close this, refresh. We don't wanna render this until loading is done, right? Uh, because we like, refresh. Could, could you? I so, have a question. Sorry. So basically, we want to move this down to. We should be able to say something like if we're loading, then we want the loader. Otherwise, we want to render um, this. And that way, let me see what's going on here. Oh, like that, right? Oh, I just made a mistake. If we're loading, render this, otherwise render this. I think I have like a, oh, right there, okay. So now if I refresh, there we mm. go. But when I hit back, we still get the animation. So let's see this again. We have to fix that a little bit. Pretty cool, looking good. But then now on a refresh, we get a clean initial render with no animation. So this is kind of, um, you need the slide over always rendered uh, to do the animation, but you don't wanna render it until the data is ready. So that's what this loading Boolean is used for here. This is our use directory hook, could be use query, use SWR. Loading tells you once you have the data, then you derive the household from the query params and the loaded data, but once the data is there, you always render this slide over. And again, if you were using something like uh, frame or motion, which you actually can, you can mix uh, frame or motion as a transition, but still use dialogue from headless UI, which I've done before, you could um, conditionally render this and still have unmapped animations. But this is a nice, this is a nice little pattern here. Question for you. So it, it looks like you have some initial loading UI, right? So just reload the page. Yes, let's go back and reload the page. Yep. So and let's did that loading. So actually, go go to that index DB yeah. file and yeah, bump I up think that load time. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. That's a good point. But we can also <clears> just <throat> do this um, and refresh. Oop. Yeah. So this is a point. This is exactly what I wanted to make. It's exactly the point I wanted to make. Why is it so, this showing? Um, it is showing. Scroll down. Oh, because you have your loader uh, UI, but then you also have this, this, these uh, elements uh, up uh, here. Uh, so my, right my here. question, this, this, this is, this is where it belongs. This is where it belongs. This is where it belongs. I, I missed that this, that this was the, this was the beginning of the, um, this is actually the beginning of the page. Right. So, so I, I think my question is like, what, what elements do you want inside here? Um, how do you think about this? What, mm -hmm. what elements do you want? inside the loading thing versus, mm -hmm. versus outside the loading uh, turner. Right. And also, why is this not 
it looks a little, maybe it's just because of this, but I feel like it was uh, higher up before, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. Well, go back, go back, because we might have some more stuff. We've got, uh, we're rendering a directory filter panel. Does that always get shown? But that was always shown before, I okay, believe. Was... Uh, let's. Well, where does community zero come from? Let's look let's at, look at the times. changes that we've made here and see where it was before. So before we had it right below. Ah, it was in, it was in this flex grow div. So right here. Okay, so, so why don't we the, move loading the loading was in the div, and then this was outside. So I think we can just move this all to be inside yeah. this div, and we'll be good to go with that. Everybody now, I will say this does, rent, this does move where our slider was originally rendered. I don't know if that needs to be yes, in a specific location. You, that's correct. So it, originally it was outside the div, um, but usually, hopefully, this, whatever, however this is working, um, because it's using headless UI, this should be rendered in a portal, which is nice because this kind of thing doesn't matter. So that's like a benefit of using these libraries that use portals that can be right near um, the other content. Okay, cool. So I think that's back to working. So now we can say loading. We refresh. Let's, yeah, let's bump it up a little bit, right? 1500. We get the loader. We get this. We get this, looks good, back, yes. I see some scrolling back there we can also address, but as far as this is going and refreshing on here, that looks great. Clicking back, looks great. So I think we've solved um, that part of the problem. And so, yeah, that's good. Let's get the close button working. So let's come into slide over. And when we click close, we want the parent here to say what happens, right? So slide over on close. What do we want to do? We basically want to go back to uh, router.back. That's what he was doing, right? Now, do we want to go to router back or do we want this to be a link? I guess for now we can just make it um, go router out back. I, 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 yeah, I would. I, I see what you're saying, making it a link. Yeah. I think it's a button. It's not a link because you wouldn't ever okay. command click this. So I think it's the same as clicking escape or clicking outside to close. It's a button. It has a focus management. It's not a link. Cool. So you have I have a, a question for you. I, I have ahead. a question for you here. Uh, do you do router? Okay, so the basically three options. Do you do router dot back? Do you do a router dot push to like the index URL with no query params? Or like, does it? That's not a question we can answer. Like you and I can't answer that question. Great that's, question. Um, so I think that is a product decision. So the question would be, if we go back to the index and we refresh, what should happen? when a user is using this application. So they load the app, they click Altenworth, and now they click the back button in their browser. That's unambiguous. That should take them back in the history so that if I click forward, then I'm gonna go forward and then I'm gonna go back. So now the question is, if I click close, do we, add a forward navigation such that if I were to hit back, I'd get back to here or I'd get back to the page, the other website I, I was at before I even visited this in the first place. So if you wanted to do that, then yes, you are exactly right. You would do a router dot push. Um, I think I would do I think router at back because if you think about this and you were to go, if I were to click close on that and then come here and click close on that and then come here and click close on that, and then you start hitting back, you're going to start, if you go back, 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 you're going to see all those panels. You're going to go through that history because now you have like six entries in the history stack. Um, no, I, 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 so I think if you want to keep things out of the history, you, you do a, a router dot replace. Yeah. That's, so I think, I think, actually, I think, I think that's actually better. I think the question that I would, 
say to, to answer this question, I, I don't know if you and I can answer it, but the question mm-hmm. I would propose would be when I, if I land on this screen and I click this close button, should I immediately close this modal and see the underneath screen or uh, should I go back to the URL that I came from? So uh, if there was like uh, uh, a that's link definitely, on the- That's definitely the answer. You should close the modal, but not push new history, I think. So then that, so in that case, we do, I think we do want to use uh, router.push or router.replace in our, in our unclosed function. Okay. Because imagine I, I put- You actually imagine, would want to hit back. I th- um, yeah, I think router.replace is right here. You send me this link, I click close, in my mind, have I done a navigation or is the initial render showing this really just so that they can link me to this, but back thinking about going back, I haven't really like clicked on a different tab here. Let's try it and see how it feels. Yeah. Also like the way just, I land mm-hmm. on a dashboard dashboard mm-hmm. has a link that says, uh, show, uh, link to, uh, Vesta and Salma Khan. I click that link. And then I click this close button. Should I see the underneath screen or should I end up back at the dashboard? Yeah, I think that to me that if you click close, you should see under the dashboard, but it's still a question of, to me, that's no question there. If you click close, you should close it and see the, see the dashboard. But there's still a question beyond that of if I click close and close the dashboard and then I hit the back button in my browser, does Vesta open again or do I leave the dashboard site altogether? Mm, 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 mm. And I think you leave the dashboard site altogether. I think if you hit back and the thing opened up again, it'd be confusing. So let's do. Okay. So, so for both those router for both those router is replace perfect. with the homepage, right? Yeah. Are we on? Yeah. Cause we're on the homepage. Yeah. Yep. So this is the caller saying when we close the slide over, um, that's what we want. And so let's go into the slide over. And now we have, what was it? On close, right? On close here. And um, now we can just pass this in on close. And um, there was one more place right here. When we click the close button, we do on close. And now we don't need this or this. And uh, now look at that, we get close. And yep, if I hit back, it doesn't start opening and going through my history, which I think is correct, but I can link you directly to Candace. Wow. I can hit outside and yep, that's the question. If back should go, oh, I was just on Candace, right? Should I, I want to get back to Candace. So maybe that in that case, you would just have it go back. But, um, I think this is probably pretty good. And then once you start clicking around, um, then. If we were to refresh here, let's see what happens. Cause this is actually a, f- you know what? If this is a forward navigation, we go well, to this- and then we go Bihan and then we go to Becker. And now what's my stack here? Um, it's actually only going to be the good question. Well, here, here's another thing should if you don't, you can do the replace on the the clicking of these links as well. Right. If you don't want it to add right. history. Right. I right. think for something like this, you know, just just thinking out loud, I think for something like this, I'd start with history. Um, yeah. I think you can make. I think you can absolutely make the argument for why you would use replace, but also, just, you know, he. Also I can imagine he ending up on the this dashboard. Button. Yes. I can imagine ending up here and just clicking things and having the tab open for a few hours, going back and forth. So yeah, Mm -hmm. let's let's do push. Let's do push. Also replaces like, you can always, it's it's a simpler factor if you need to add that in in the future. Yep, definitely. And just to show, we have these, this is the actual list and there's gonna be a link somewhere in here. Um, Right here. Oh, right there, very cool. And uh, this is also has a replace option. Right. So this is, this is how you do it with next link. Um, in case, you know, whoever needs to know that that's how, that's how you do it with the link. And then you do router.replace to do it with the router.api, but here let's do push. So, um, I'm going to command click Becker. So this is like, you just shared this with me. We load the data. There she is. I click close. I go to Cronin. I close, I go to fuel. (laughs) 
And now I can go, oh, wait, I was on feel. Oh, right. And let's go back to Cronin. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. This is awesome. This yeah. Is it's awesome. really neat. It's really neat. And I can hit escape and we get the URL and the thing closing. I can click close and I can click the back button. So now we have a nice single source of truth for the search param, for the household derived from the data, the initial render is clean. Um, can we do the uh, the scroll position in the background? So if you yes. scroll all the way down, can we yep. tackle that one? So I think that's the last thing, right? So if I scroll down, I'm on Jones and I click here, we see that it jumps to the top. And I think that is just because by default, uh, links in next reset scroll position. So if we come back within the list and we find the list, where were we with the link? So funny, we, we were just looking at this. Yeah, we were just looking at it. The uh, This is the filterable list. Yeah, I think it's down and, at the bottom. Uh, eventually, we render something that looks like a household listing. We go to the link. Link should have an option for something about scroll. Yep, right here. Let's, uh, does it have documentation? Can we bring up the Whether docs to override the default scroll behavior. And they have a link right here. Let's make this big. Default behavior of link is to scroll to the top of the page when there is a hash to find blah, 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 blah. So that's by default. So let's, uh, let's disable that. I think that's all we're going to need to do. So I'm going to command click, or let's just refresh. Is there a way to like refresh and clear my history of the current tab or you have to, I'll just do that. Yeah, there we go. Scroll down to F, open this up. Look at that. Wow. No scroll. And it's cool because we're using headless. I can't, I'm scrolling right now and my mouse is over here, but headless UI dialogue with portal takes care of body locking, you know, and so uh, the body is locked. And then when we dismiss, uh, we come right back here. Oh, ah, our dismiss, so, our push now our needs to do the same thing. To do the same thing. Router.push, probably some options, scroll, false. Pretty intuitive. Uh, let's tr give this a new shot and a new tab. Scroll down, MARD, close. Now we don't lose our scroll position. This is pretty awesome. Yeah, I will say it's funny. You don't you don't even trust the hard refresh. You have to go to a new I, tab. Well, I was, doing, I was doing that because of the history, but then I realized yeah. it's not really important anymore. Um, but check this out. Pretty cool. <coughs> even with forward, the, that's nice. The forward, the scroll position is actually part of the history stack. Um, so I scrolled down, but then I went forward and we go back to our previous history, which is actually a really nice feature wow. of the router. I remember when Ember routers first got this years ago. But this is the kind of thing where if you're building you know, like a Twitter feed and you load all these tweets and you go somewhere and you come back and it's like an infinity scroll and you lost your scroll position, right? Scroll position is really a, it's a feature, it's a property of the element in the history stack. So you want it as part of that. So let me just kind of- Wait, wait hold on, hold on, again. click. I, I want to, okay, let me, do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna refresh, right? I'm actually gonna do this thing where we go here so we have nothing in the history. My back is empty. I'm going to scroll to where C is basically at the top, click con, right? And then I'm going to click here to go back. And then I'm gonna scroll down to D. But if I click back in my browser, we get back to C. Right. And Very that's cool. different from the link or the router dot push scroll true false thing. That is the history item remembering the scroll top of the body, which is how the browser works. And it's pretty amazing that these SPA routers have this now because for a long time they didn't. And um, that's exactly what you would want to see in this Qu behavior. Question. Can you grab this URL here? So this mm -hmm. is going to be my next. And open, open a new it. tab and what should we see that so that this so that's a good question so the scroll position is part of my stack it's not derived from the link if you wanted to do something where you were to scroll the list to where the user is to like maybe highlight them that's another piece of ui right ui is a function of state we have to derive that from the url somehow so that would be another fancy thing you would do I think that would actually be basically an effect 
you would have to render first and calculate. You would look for the household in the list, find the scroll top, and then set window.scroll top to that or body.scroll top to that in an effect. Um, that's a good example of a, of, an, of, of a side effect in React because you're interfacing with a browser API, something like window.body.scrolltop equals. Um, and we did that when we were building the photo gallery with Hassan at Vercel. And you link to a photo, and then there's a back button to go back to the grid. And if you're using the app, it goes back to where you were. But if you were linked to a single photo, you don't have that feed rendered. So we would just find where in the feed that photo was and put you there. So you didn't lose your, so you had some context instead of just starting you out at the top. So that would be like another enhancement you can make to this, cool. which would be pretty cool. cool. <clears throat> but this is all working great. Um, and now we don't see any of the kind of behavior that we saw at the beginning and, uh, we don't have any extra renders. We can re-render here without an initial animation on the side panel. And, um, it's all being driven by like a single source of truth. So I think, I think that is a pretty nice refactor there. Yeah. We don't need use effect. This is my favorite not being new <laughs> used. So you go ahead and organize those imports. It gets rid of it. And, um, I think that is about everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we don't even need to expose on exit complete. I wouldn't even have that if I were going to reuse slide over until I needed it, it's there's, there's valid use cases for it, but for something like this, we don't need it. So also this pattern, just, just scroll up to the top of this component. This is something that, uh, I end up with in, in a lot of my apps, you can get rid of the on exit complete from the mm -hmm. types. Uh, this sort of pattern of like wrapping. We also don't need state from this. Sorry to cut you off. Awesome. Um, awesome. It's kind of, a, it's, it's, it's a controlled component. The slide over has become controlled component from the perspective of the parent, right? Right. And this, this is a pattern that I would say in all of our apps, we end up with where we basically are, are wrapping some UI library, be it headless or radix or whatever, and just control, just exposing the props that we need. And it's funny because most of my slide overs and modals have these props. It's like children yep. open and close. I don't need yep. anything else. Yep. Um, there are, like you said, there are valid use cases for all the other props, but, um, yeah, we'll wait till they're needed before adding them. Absolutely. Very cool. Um, the only other thing he asked here in information was, uh, how to present the household's details, given there are some households with only one person, some households with multiple people, plus considerably more information about others. And then the other thing I was going to mention is, um, is, uh, when I first clicked on this, I would probably make this a little bit faster on open. Um, that was just something I noticed. It's, that's like a product question, how people use it and everything. Um, but you know, if this was like a traditional UI where you click and it just loads a link, you kind of want to see it quicker. So I, I think I might open this quicker. Um, and then get rid it's of it. It's funny. It's really hard for me to tell. It looks like it's instant for the, uh, mm -hmm. on the screen share. Cause I can't see the, the mm -hmm. click, you know, mm -hmm. now there's something else I just noticed that I just want to see if it's kind of within the scope of this video. Um, if you notice when I click and I click close, the content is actually going to disappear while it is closing. And that is because household here is being updated. Once you render and the URL search param goes away, um, as soon as it goes away, that is going to be null, right? Because we, we it's, we're going to new render it's null. We don't have household name and household head, so we don't have it set. And so it actually disappears when that side panel close. This is an area where I would probably just reach for frame or motion because frame or motion is designed to solve this problem. I don't know if that's why he reached for the effect in the first place, because you needed some piece of state that you control that you could keep around during the unmount animation and then clear it after that is a, be a problem better solved by frame or motion because frame or motion basically would let you 
all of this code would be the same, but instead of this transition, it would become uh, animate presence. Go back and, to and frame uh, of motion keeps a copy of the DOM around while it unmounts, so you wouldn't have that problem. Yeah. Go back to his. I'm going to show you how I've, how I've solved this uh, mm -hmm. in the past, and, and he's got all the the pieces already wired up. So open is going to be dependent on if there's a household. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, this is this. I'm going to present a very hacky solution. Mm -hmm. but open is going to be uh, on line 58. Open is going to be if there's a household, and then on line 61, that's going to be the household that we display. Uh, but as you pointed out, as soon as we close, we reset the query param, so there's no more household. Let's just uh, rename line 61, the household we pass in. Mm -hmm. um, let's just call this like uh, snapshot cash cached household. Okay. No, no, still call it household, but call the variable cache. We're going to uh, create uh, a new uh. thing. Yes. And then uh, up top before we render, uh, basically on the very last line, we're going to say const cache household is going to be a uh, used to bounce <laughs> household. And we'll say like a second. I've, we're, I'm just making stuff up here. but OK, so now let's give this a shot. Interesting. Oh, no. Oh. Ah, ah. <laughs> my bad. Uh, we we are rendering with a household and then um, which exists, but cash household doesn't update for a second later. So cash household is still ah. in, the, in this case. But if you so. start if you started out here, uh, yeah, basically, you, you yeah. The, this this was like a fail of an example, but gotcha, the, the, gotcha. I'm trying to say you basically you keep Buffer a copy, or whatever you keep a copy of the household around for uh, a second or whatever uh, enough time for that animation to complete. Um, so there's mm -hmm. probably a way you can do this as well. But um, I, I would I would definitely yeah. use um, frame or motion here. Because, I mean, we could even install I it think and so. do it. Um, but I think this is probably. Yeah, we could. No, let's let's. Yeah, I think I, I think like the idea of like sticking with 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 his yeah, tech. the refactor. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, Frame of motion solves this problem wonderfully, and it and it works very well with these dialogues and all the other headless UI components as well. Um, just a, as a heads up, you would do something like uh, in the slide over the dialogue, you would use static, so it's always rendered, and then you would wrap this out there uh, in the calling side like this and you would use animate presence from frame or motion like that and that this would basically come out here this would be static and then back uh, here this would end up looking like this and then you would render this like that mm -hmm. here can and I this, um... and and this way uh, this is basically what when this gets unmounted frame of motion takes a snapshot of it it sees there's an exit prop to find. It runs an unmount animation, but it keeps a snapshot of this around so you can see it uh, until the animation completes. So I like I like I like building all of this stuff um, in a way that works without animation, and your source of truth is correct. You're not using an effect for anything, and the libraries I like to use layer in nicely on top of that without really changing any of the architecture of the code, and so. Um, Things like not adding new React state if you're deriving it. None of that ideally should change if you add animations in. So, cool. Awesome. I think that's a good place to wrap it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That was great. Um, oh, and then the question about, I would say, it's not my special area of, of um, specialty. Specialties? <laughs> that's not a word. <laughs> not your it's specialty. Friday. <laughs> it's not my specialty. Um, expertise or expertise or specialties, if you want to just combine those two words together. He's, he asked about uh, how to display this in a kind of nicer way, given that sometimes we have something like Cassie Becker with just the name, and sometimes we have something like this, where we have lots of people and an address. Um, I might look through some of Steve Sugar's tweets from Refactoring UI. They have a lot of good stuff about how to do this. Um, and maybe this would be, I mean, this doesn't look bad to me, you know? Can it's, you open up one with one, just a name? Can we see what you, mm -hmm. so that has lots of details. That but has do lots of details, phone numbers. 
You know, I think I think because we're on the lower resolution for screen recording, mm -hmm. um, it might be. It, it totally looks fine, but yeah, um, maybe on the bigger screen, it it does look a bit smaller. Mm -hmm. It's a cool app, though. It looks great. I think it's very yeah. simple. It looks really good. Um, yeah, nice. Awesome. All right. Well, why don't we wrap it up there? Um, thanks, Ryan, so much for sharing the app. You know, it's it's a really uh, it was really easy to understand. And um, that was a really nice code base to work on in spite of there being a few, you know, edge cases and bugs that we fixed. Um, I was pretty impressed, you know, with the code. And uh, I've seen lots of code, both of, both of us have, haven't we seen lots of code bases that take a lot longer to, to get into and make changes to. I, I, yeah, the reproduction there was awesome because yeah. we didn't have to touch any like the data fetching, uh, even yeah. though that was all like just mocked, we didn't have to touch it, it was still async, we still had the loading state. Um, so yeah, that was that was great because we just got to focus on the things we wanted to focus on, like the param and the, the URL and the, um, the headless props so yeah yeah it was it's really it was a, it's a nicely written app and um i also was reflecting that when we were doing that man these tools work together so well these days imagine trying to build something like that six years ago the way next router react and uh headless ui and react portals all of that stuff with the scroll every bit of that is um we ended up with something that was felt really solid and uh it's just nice when you see like a real world app with the ux like that and uh how how nice the when the tools work together well it's very very nice yeah very cool um cool well thanks for everyone for watching if you have something similar that you'd like us to look at or like me to look at some ux flows in the app you're building or um, some questions about how to deal with something i'd love to look at more of this stuff so let me know in the comments um Otherwise, thanks for the pair, Ryan, and uh, uh, I'll see you guys soon. Cool. See ya. Bye.